Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout and be entered into the month-long giveaways, culminating into a Black Lotus and 1st edition Charizard. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a banned Sunset Stadium combo control deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the full playset of Teferi who slows the Sunset, the new 4 mana Planeswalker from Midnight Hunt starts out at 4 loyalty, and the plus 1 is what we're most interested in as we get to choose up to 1 target artifact, up to 1 target creature, and up to 1 target land. We get to untap the chosen permanents we control and then tap the chosen permanents we don't control, as well as gaining 2 life so under the right circumstances, the plus one from Teferi could generate us three additional mana, which is quite powerful if we can untap one of our eight mana creatures, one of our six mana artifacts, including two copies of Treasure Vault, and then of course we also get to untap an extra land, so that could potentially generate three mana, and then we can use that mana to ramp into all sorts of goodies, like our Alrin's Epiphany, letting us take an extra turn, generating two bird tokens, which will make it easier to keep activating our Teferi over and over, and then the alternate win condition in this deck is Strixhaven Stadium, which has great synergy with Teferi, as the three man artifact can tap to generate a colorless mana, and then puts a point counter on the stadium. And then whenever a creature deals combat damage to us, we have to remove a point counter from Stadium, but whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to an opponent, we can put a point counter on Stadium, and then if it has 10 or more counters on it, we remove all of them and that player loses the game. So by untapping our Stadium and tamping it again, thanks to Teferi, we can potentially put multiple point counters on Stadium in the same turn, which will then make it easier to eventually get to 10 counters to win the game, especially thanks to the bird tokens from Alrun's Epiphany, which can help us cross a finish line and deal those last points of damage to trigger Stadium's alternate win condition. And then looking at the rest of our deck, we can also ramp into Koma, Cosmo Serpent. The 7 mana 6 6 Legendary Serpent cannot be countered, and at the beginning of each upkeep, that also includes the opponent's upkeep, we get to make a 3 3 blue Serpent creature token, and we can sacrifice another Serpent at any point to either tap target permanent and its activated abilities cannot be activated this turn, or we can make Koma indestructible until end of turn, saving it from various removal spells in the format and then eventually going wide with Koma's Coil tokens is another way to get the alternate win condition with Strixhaven Stadium. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck here. At 2 mana we mentioned having some mana creatures with the full playset of a Root Coil Creeper, a 2-2 that can tap for 1 mana of any color, can also add 2 mana of any one color that we can spend to cast spells from our graveyard, so that has great synergy with our flashback Memory Deluge, and then we can also potentially exile the creeper to get back a card with flashback and exile, so we can potentially get back a deluge that we've already flashed back if the game goes very long. And then we've got Tangled Florahedron, which we can play as a tap land or as a 1-1 creature that can tap to add a green mana. Then we've got some cheap interaction with Into the Royal, can bounce a non-land permanent to its owner's hand, can also be kicked for one and a blue, in which case we also draw a card. Then at 3 mana besides Stadium, we've got a bit more ramp with 2 copies of Field Trip, only 2 basic forces in the deck since we do need to have lots of mana fixing and we want to make room for Treasure Vault, so only had room for 2 basic forests, which is why we're not playing more copies of Field Trip, letting us search a forest and put it on the battlefield tapped. We also get to learn, so we've got 7 sideboard lessons we can grab, including Environmental Sciences, Reduce to Memory as Removal, Teachings for card draw, Breach to deal with artifacts and enchantments, Prophecy as more card draw, and then two copies of Mascot Exhibition as an alternative win condition if we don't have anything else going on. And then two copies of Divide by Zero gives us more interaction, returning target spell or permanent with mana value 1 or greater to Sonar Sand also lets us learn. And then at 4 mana we've got Teferi, we only mentioned the plus 1 ability so far, then the minus 2 lets us look at the top 3 cards of our library, putting one of them into our hand and the rest on the bottom of our library in any order, so it can also be used as a bit of card draw. And then the minus 7 if we can get to it gives us an emblem saying untap all permanents you control during each opponent's untap steps, and we can draw a card during each opponent's draw step as well. So that's a great combo with expensive instance, like the 4 mana Memory Deluge, which lets us take a look at the top X cards of our library, where X is the amount of mana spent to cast it, and then we can put two of them into our hand, the rest on the bottom of our library in a random order. So if the opponent exiles it with an Elite Spellbinder, we get to look at the top 6 cards, or if we flash it back out of the graveyard for 7 mana, we can look at the top 7 cards, so it digs very deep to find 2 cards that we need. 
And then of course getting to use this at instant speed, good combo with the minus 7 onto Ferry, and as we mentioned also good with the Root Coil Creeper, potentially making 2 mana for the flashback. And then we also have two copies of Doomscar as a board wipe. Not the most synergistic with our eight mana creatures, but sometimes you need a catch-up mechanism, and we can potentially find it with our Deluge if we really need it. And then finally our full playset of Alrun's Epiphany, and two copies of Coma. Then the mana base includes our two copies of Treasure Vault, a colorless land, and a three-color deck. It is a little bit sketchy, but the synergy with the fairy I think still makes it worth it. Can also potentially generate a bunch of treasure to ramp into some bigger plays. And then we've got all 12 pathways in the band colors. And then we also get to play with some of the new dual lands from Innistrad with the overgrown farmland and four copies of a deserted beach. And then two basic forests and two basic islands that we can also potentially find with our environmental sciences. So that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand. If my creeper survives, I can play turn three Deluge. And then Doomscar can catch us back up if we're facing a more aggressive creature deck. This is one of those spots where Creeper lets us Deluge, where Florahedron would not. Jadar makes a zombie. So a black sacrifice deck. Alright, drew the island anyway. So we'll pass. Got all three instants available. Now we'll take three. So, yeah, taking a decent amount of damage here early on. Can eventually stem the bleeding with a Doom Scar. Delusion response, finding. Epiphany, probably want to take a land. And then this card. So next turn I'll have 5 mana. I could foretell plus divide, probably better than into the royal. And I think we're foretelling a Doomscar here. Take four damage at least. Opponent firing up Faceless Haven. So I can chump Haven with Creeper and then bounce my own Creeper. That seems like a good use of my mana. And then learn for. Not sure what. So next turn I get to wipe the board. Probably foretell Epiphany or I can replay Creeper, that's probably better. And then the turn after I could maybe Exhibition before casting Epiphany. Don't think I need to get Sciences. So this should work. Opponent does get to learn twice. So we'll see what they get. Not too many options in mono black. Get sciences. And necrotic fumes, sure. Right, so if Creeper survives, I get to exhibition. Could also flashback deluge or hardcast epiphany. But Epiphany is going to be a little bit better once we play Exhibition. Opponent attacking with Haven could imply that they have a sweeper they're setting up, like a Meat Hook Massacre or a Blood on the Snow, which they could cast next turn if I go for Exhibition. So that's likely what's happening here. So if that's the case, I might want to flashback Deluge instead. Creeper makes two mana for flashing back Deluge, also relevant to keep in mind. I think we'll do that. Because playing Exhibition into Blood on the Snow sounds pretty poor. Umbral Juke to make me sacrifice. Sacrifice. 
see if we can find the ferry or stadium. Found the ferry and could take the treasure vault so the ferry makes two mana instead of one. Kind of like that. Also helps me hit my land drop for the turn. And a trespasser. All right. So time for the ferry. And then I could field trip, play Flora Heater maybe, which I could jump block with if I want. Not gonna target a creature. And what to learn for now. Could always get uh, Prophecy as just a flexible card here. Don't think I'm jumping, but Florhedron at this point is about as good as a Creeper anyway. They could blot on the snow just to wipe away Planeswalkers. Now that they activate Haven, I might have to chum block with the Hedron if they go after my Teferi. Alright, they're just going face. Uh, Soul Shatter. Killing Teferi. Fair enough. So down to two we go. And then now might be time for Mascot Exhibition at long last. And then I could still Introduction to Prophecy as well. Don't think I want to play Creeper. Maybe start with uh, Prophecy here, see what we can find. Stadium and Divide by Zero. I like both. Although, what's the ward cost again? Discarding a card. So maybe Divide by Zero is not the answer. But I'll keep a Stadium. And then Exhibition. I have three blockers. Hopefully that's enough to survive. And then Stadium into Epiphany could be a good sequence. I twitch into Necrotic Fumes. Although, exiling I twitch to Necrotic Fumes doesn't let them learn at least. And if they're Necrotic Fumes, they won't be able to attack with Haven. And then we can eventually use Creeper to get back Deluge from Exile as well. Alright, or we can draw a Deluge. So, time for Stadium. Attack. Start scoring some points. Right, opponent flunks our token, fair enough. Another stadium. Deluge first. Finding Koma, and do I need a land? Four, five, six, seven. Not really, but I guess I'll take the untapped one. Flyers can attack. And Koma should help us win with our stadium. If they blood on the snow, we could make Koma indestructible. Opponent plays Eye Twitch, we get to untap, and Stadium should get there. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. So we basically have all the card types we need to get maximum value out of Teferi's plus one with 
Treasure Vault, Florahedron, and of course our land. Now I don't know if Florahedron's likely to survive here, but we'll try. Still play Island in case I draw another blue source. Then I also have the option of casting Deluge instead of the Fairy. Put onto red white and Sacred Fire kills the Florahedron, so put onto on a burn deck. Yeah, could have potentially held Florahedron to play as a land, as now I don't have anything going on. But uh pretty likely we get to divide by zero or something. So I'll keep that up over foretelling Doomscar. Alright, I'll send that back. Get environmental sciences. Which can grab second island, maybe. And then fertile doomscar. Now we will need to untap with the fairy or draw another white source before we can cast doomscar, as there's no basic planes to search up. Epiphany. Alright, so I can Teferi untap my lands for Telepiphany. And then hope Teferi survives with 5 loyalty. That's and then next turn I can make double white. And the more burn spells they use on Teferi, the fewer they'll have for our life total. So best case scenario, Bodon taps out for Radiant Scroll Wielder. And then next turn we get to Doomscar. But they might be tempted to take out our Planeswalker first. Inspiration will do exactly that. Alright, so there's a second white source for Doomscar. So now if I were to play the fairy, I can still keep up divide by zero. That seems strong. And then I think I let them untap with alchemists. Because again, we're trying to set up the trap of... Doomscar. Shog to ferry down to three. Alchemist can deal damage to planeswalkers. Still at a healthy 23 life. Alright, so I can divide by zero and bounce my own to ferry, I guess. To try and save it. And then learn for something cheap. Don't think I'll reliably be able to use teachings, so let's go with Introduction to Prophecy. And then I could still Teferi play Introduction, opponents running out of burn spells. So hopefully third time's the charm. So really seeing the power of that uh, treasure vault, allowing us to make an extra mana with the fairy. And then introduction will be looking for lands more than anything with triple deluge. Just need to develop my mana and we'll be fine. The plus one of the fairy of course gaining two life, very useful in this type of matchup. Alright, I'll keep both lands. And then white is fine. Don't think I'll need more than double green. And this can be a third blue source. Alright, adversary. Okay. That's unfortunate. A hasty threat that can help them finish off the fairy by getting back a burn spell. So definitely a setback. Seen 
and they're still not committing the scroll wielder into the doomscar which is something we've been waiting for a while now really should have seen that coming I think I'm still waiting on Doomscar, just Deluge, probably main phase. See what we can find. Okay, Stadium looks good and another Doomscar. I guess now I'll just play the Doomscar then. And get a backup. And then we've got an answer for the scroll wielder. All right, so we get to start at 20 life with seven mana in play. Don't hate my chances. So let's stadium cast Doomscar, make sure the mana taps properly. Just a one for one. Right, there's Ram Carolus at long last. Inspiration dealing four damage now. Learns for reduced to memory to exile stadium. There's the fairy. Okay, so how about the fairy? Untap. Play Epiphany. That looks good. Call for a hero? And yeah, try to find another Epiphany here, and then we're in business. So if I Deluge, I could 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah, still enough for. Another epiphany, no epiphany, but a coma. Still looks good. And I'll take a land. Can attack for two. And then plus. Play Coma. They'll probably have to exile Coma with the Reduce to Memory. Can Shum block Ram Carolus. And then uh, can try to win the game with Stadium. Alright, they're going for Stadium instead, so I get to keep Coma. That's fine. But uh, opponent's kind of between a rock and a hard place. One card left, double sacred fire in the graveyard, which, you know, does deal three damage. It's going to be a kicked adversary for now. So I guess they'll go for another reduce on Koma. Didn't think I can stop that with Koma's ability. Alright, so they had the solution for two problematic permanents. No, oh, goes for inspiration instead. That's surprising. Dealing four to Teferi. And learns for another mastery, that makes sense. Okay, I'll just jump Ram Corollas here. Keep my Serpent token around. Alrighty, so start by flashing back Deluge, and our opponent packs it in. Yeah, a little bit too far behind with double Deluge in the graveyard, so much mana to work with, and our opponent is working with scraps, but they definitely put up a good fight and prevented us from winning with our stadium. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a very controlling draw, but I think it's fine. Doomscar buys us time to deploy Memory Deluge. And hopefully find more goodies. 
shelter points towards a creature deck. Now, we could still play Florahedron and then next turn play Deluge already. That seems fine. Even though the Florahedron will eventually die to Doomscar. So yep, yeah, looks like a Magecraft and green-white deck. So the Light Scribe represents a lot of damage here. So next turn might have to pull the trigger on Doomscar already. We'll see what else they decide to play. And then what do we want to find? I guess start looking for more mana acceleration to develop our mana, make it easier to flash back. For now, just take three. So not the most aggressive of turns. And since our opponent isn't adding anything else to the board, I think I can hang on to Doomscar for the time being. Okay, field trip is excellent, so let's field trip foretell. And then which card to foretell is another interesting question. Here I'm also sort of liking mascot exhibition just to provide some win condition. And then I guess they might not suspect Doomscar yet. So let's go with foretelling Doomscar. The discount is also a little bit more relevant there as we get a 2 mana discount instead of a 1 mana discount. So at 17 I don't expect to die with just a Light Scribe in play. Opponents moving in. Hits us for 5. They might be keeping up Snakeskin Veil, which of course doesn't help against the Doomscar. For now... Yeah, I mean, I could just not swipe the board yet and flash back Deluge. Keep kind of developing my own game plan. So I could just pass. Don't really want to play Mascot Exhibition if I'm eventually going to... Doomscar, but I also don't feel inclined to start going off with Epiphany. Now I can still potentially chum block with Florahedron if needed and flash back. So I still don't think I'm at risk of just dying. Alright, there we see Clarion Spirits, and now opponents playing into our Doomscar a little bit more. Although they could potentially find a lesson to name Doomscar to prevent us from casting it, which could save them. Although in that case we can just make some blockers with Exhibition and Epiphany. Yep, opponent gets Academic Probation. So we'll see if they name Doomscar. For now, probably still take 5. If I jumped, it would be even more obvious that I'm setting up a Sweeper. So your opponent does not go for the probation, maybe keeping it as a way to remove a blocker. And we found some goodies. The fairy, another epiphany, haven, coma. Could also go for stadium plus another epiphany and try to get there with stadium without the fairy. Um, I guess if I take the fairy and stadium, the fairy makes three mana. So I guess I like that line. Ignore the epiphany. And the coma, which, you know, could be fine win conditions as well. But now I get to play Stadium, play Teferi, and then I have to be careful with keeping enough white mana. It's that Florahedron. And then I'll still be able to play a 3 mana Doomscar afterwards. And then we get to untap with a Planeswalker in play, which seems fun. Of course, once I Doomscar, I lose the Florahedron, so that's minus one mana source. 
and then uh, can foretell another epiphany here. Don't think there's tricks to make indestructible in standard anymore. So opponent gets to untap, we're at 9. No haste creatures that I expect. And we've got an active planeswalker. Stadium at 2 counters. So I like my chances. Another stadium. So could go digging for more epiphanies, but I guess for now, just epiphany. And then can play stadium. Fortella Doomscar. And then we get to take our extra turn. And then now maybe Minus looking for another Epiphany. Into the Royal instead. Alright. Still get to hit for two. Stadium will go up to seven essentially and then Exhibition can maybe help me cross the finish line and score the touchdown. The home run. The penalty kick, whatever you want to call it. The slam dunk. I'm running out of analogies. And we'll keep up into the royal. And Lumamancer, sure. And a Blizzard Brawl. Yeah, that's okay. Doesn't prevent me from winning with Stadium. Wait and see what else they do. So yeah, this game our opponents had the early Light Scribe, but maybe they fear Doomscar, so they didn't want to overcommit, which, you know, could have worked out. But luckily we were able to kind of leverage their passive play to get the Stadium going. Right, let's uh, untap, and then I can use Teferi to tap down the opponent's creature as well. I guess technically I should be floating some mana first. I guess play another stadium, up to 9 counters. Now we do actually need to deal damage to the opponent to get the trigger that wins us the game. So just getting 10 counters by using Stadium for mana is not going to be enough. We actually need to deal damage to enable the alternate win condition. But that's not going to be a problem here. Alright, GG's. Get a bunch of Stadium triggers. Not sure which one is the winning Stadium. We'll have to wait until the very end. And there we go, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn 2, Florahedron, hopefully turn 3, cast Deluge. Got a Stadium as well to go with our Epiphany. So we're just missing Teferi. Opponent with turn 1 planes, Haven, so white aggro deck. Although Smith points towards some more artifact synergies instead. Ayo ah, Vecna, okay. Maybe your opponent's trying to assemble Vecna here. So I could cast Deluge, could also play Stadium for Telepiphany. I think Deluge is still a fine play here. Helps us find Teferi. And I'm not in a hurry to cast Epiphany. Alright, portable hole. Gonna force the issue on the deluge. And then probably take land plus... Can't play creeper after playing stadium. So I think taking two lands might be better. Could also take the into the royal to bounce portable hole. 
Well, let's just take two lanes. And then the next Deluge doesn't need to worry about picking up lanes anymore. Now I get to go Stadium plus Fortel, which is nice and mana efficient. Divide by zero can maybe interact with the assembling of Vecna. Now in this case we had to tap Stadium in our turn, otherwise if you don't actually have to use it for mana, you can wait until the opponent's end step to just tap it and add a counter so you don't lose them if the opponent attacks. So Io Vecna loses two life to draw a card. A Gross Smith. Which can hit us for three here. And then Divide by Zero should be a useful piece of interaction. Can hold it up alongside the second Deluge. Could also main phase Deluge to try and find a two mana creature, for instance. Okay. So. We'll just pass it back. Could also play Divide by Zero main phase, get a three mana lesson and cast it right now. Don't think that's necessary. But it is tempting to main phase the Deluge. Yeah, maybe I should. Because I could find a Root Coil Creeper or Florahedron. So I'll take Epiphany, Florahedron. Play Florahedron. Hope it doesn't get put in another portable hole. And then next turn we could maybe start chaining together Epiphany with Stadium in play. No Teferi yet to untap Stadium, which would make it a lot easier to actually pull off the alternate win condition, but we'll see. Take three. And the Book of Exalted Deeds. All right, so opponent's going for that alternate win condition on Faceless Haven. Okay, I see. Well, we don't have Field of Ruin, so I'm going to have to do something about the book right now. Uh, which we can, thanks to Divide by Zero. Yeah, I can uh, Deluge, see if I can find Teferi, cast Teferi, and then still Divide by Zero. That would be a pretty good sequence. So let's try it. No Teferi. Did find a coma, and uh, I guess that's probably the pick. And then I'll take a treasure vault just in case. And then for now, the plan is to divide by zero, bounce the book so they won't be able to replay it and activate on Haven. And then I could learn for Containment Breach as an answer to the book. And I'll keep Florahedron back just in case. So we've got a few ways to approach this. Could still try to go for an alternate wing condition on Stadium. Could just play Coma. And then uh, take some extra turns after. So we're making additional Serpents as well. Would love to find Teferi. No Teferi yet. So a three, six, seven, eight, nine mana. So can't let my opponent untap with the book, so I have to Containment Breach it at the very least. And that leaves enough mana for maybe a first epiphany. Sure. So I won't be able to score a point with Florahedron. Just have to cast epiphany. Uh, 
All right, and then now I think I can afford to play Coma, as the opponent's not going to have enough mana to play Backup Book, Activate Haven, and put the counter on it. And then I get to foretell another Epiphany, or is there a deterministic win here? So if I play another Epiphany, tap this, attack, so that's three, four, five counters, and then next turn, yeah, I think we win. So sure, let's uh, get the Stadium alternate win condition instead. And our opponent concedes, so yeah, attack for three, up to five counters, untap, five creatures in play, send in the team, and that's ten counters on Stadium. So we got there even without the ferry. All right. So yeah, we got to see our banned Teferi Sunset Stadium deck in action. And I've got to say, I was pleasantly surprised by Teferi's performance, even just as a way to untap our lands, especially the combination with Treasure Vault was pretty cool. So there's definitely a powerful synergy there that you could use in plenty of other decks with Teferi going forward. And then Stadium actually proved to be a quite reliable win condition, especially thanks to Epiphany making a bunch of birds and Mascot Exhibition helps us go wide as well. And then every now and then Koma can also help us close out the game. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.